Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Biology. Today we're going to be talking about intermolecular forces. Now, in the previous video we talked about bonding and bonding described how atoms come together to form compounds. Now, in this video, in intermolecular forces, we're going to be talking about how molecules interact with each other. You might know the the prefix inter, you've probably heard that in intercontinental. If you're talking about intercontinental interactions, we'd be talking about how countries from different continents are working together. In the same way, now we're not going to be talking about the atoms that come together to form molecules. We're going to be talking about the molecules themselves and how they interact with each other. So there's three main types of intermolecular forces. And the first one is hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So hydrogen bonding, uh, let me emphasize this before I start. We're talking about molecules only. These only occur in molecules, okay? So those are, those are compounds which have covalent bonds. No, this does not occur in these three types of forces. They do not occur in compounds which have ionic bonds, only covalent bonds. All right, now that we have that cleared up, let's first talk about hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding occurs when hydrogen is covalently bonded to either nitrogen oxygen and fluorine. And basically what happens is that either the nitrogen, the oxygen, or the fluorine, depending on what the hydrogen is bonded to, that atom is going to pull on the electrons within the covalent bond, and that's going to create a separation of charges. I'll demonstrate that with, um, I'll show you how that happens in um, uh, just a second. But what happens basically is there's a separation of charges, and because of the separation of charges, these charges are attracted to each other, and that creates a hydrogen bond. So that probably makes no sense, so let me actually show you that with a example. Now, water exhibits hydrogen bonding, and this is very important biology. Water exhibits hydrogen bonding, and water is H2O, and water looks a little like this. The hydrogens are here, and then there's an oxygen like this, and it has this nice bent shape. So that's the oxygen, and then here are the hydrogens. And what happens is that, right here, the oxygen is going to pull on the electrons within the bond. Now remember that from the bonding video that is like a bond consists of two electrons. So there's an electron coming from the hydrogen, and then there's another electron coming from the oxygen within these bonds. So what happens is that there is a pull. The oxygen atom is going to pull on these electrons within the bond. So there's a pull this way. So what happens now is that the electrons within these covalent bonds, the electrons within these covalent bonds are going to spend more time near the oxygen. Okay, like this. So they're closer to the oxygen, and the hydrogen is just left off. Now, remember that um, you don't know this, you probably don't know this, but a hydrogen atom consists of, let me write this, a hydrogen atom consists of a proton and an electron, just one proton and one electron. So what happens is that now that the oxygen is going to pull on the electron, is going to pull on hydrogen's only electron, what's going to be left is just this bare proton, it's like a bare proton like this. And this proton has a positive charge. So if you split the molecule in half, of, of course molecules are not like split in half, but I'm just going to do this to demonstrate this. This side, the bottom side of the molecule, is now going to have a positive charge because all there's being left now is just a bare proton, and that proton has a positive charge. So the way we demonstrate that positive charge is with a delta, which looks like that, that's a Greek symbol, and a plus. So near the hydrogen atoms, there is a partial positive charge. Again, that's a delta with a plus, and this is a Greek symbol. Okay, so there's a positive charge on this end, and now here near the oxygen atom, since there's a lot of electrons, electrons from the oxygen, I mean from the hydrogen, are going to be pulled by the oxygen. Near the oxygen, there's going to be a partial negative charge because electrons have 
a negative charge. So if the electrons are all in one region, that area is going to be negative. So now that the water molecule has a partial positive charge and a partial negative charge, that's what I mean by the separation of charges over here, these water molecules will start to interact with each other. And let me display that here. So if you have one water molecule here, and then you have another one right here, and then you can have another one right here, What's going to happen is that since the hydrogen has a partial positive charge and the oxygen has a partial negative charge, a partial negative charge, these are going to start to be attracted to each other. So, th for example, this hydrogen right here is going to be attracted to the negative charge right here. The positive opposite charges attract. So these charges will be attracted like this. And then here the oxygen can be uh, can be attracted to the hydrogen right here because again po um, opposite charges attract and this attraction right here is called the hydrogen bond this right here this attraction is a hydrogen bond that is also a hydrogen bond okay so that's how hydrogen bonding works okay now let's look at dipole dipole interaction and dipole dipole interaction is the uh, is another type of interaction it's similar to hydrogen bonding in that we're going to see um, partial positive and negative charges being attracted to each other and it occurs in polar molecules. Remember from the bonding video that a polar molecule is a molecule that has um, a partial positive and partial negative end. Um, and it's like hydrogen bonding but it's not as strong as hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is stronger than dipole-dipole interaction. So let me give you an example of how this occurs. So it occurs between polar molecules, so let me go ahead and draw an example of a polar molecule here quickly. So this molecule is polar, and the if we divide this molecule into two parts, the top and this chlorine side is going to have a partial negative charge, and then this this hydrogen side is going to have a partial positive charge. And that's a polar molecule. And then let's say another polar molecule comes around, like um, like let's say HCl. HCl is a polar molecule. Let's say that comes around. And if you split this molecule into two, then the chlorine side will have a partial negative charge and the hydrogen side is going to have a partial positive charge. Well, that looks disgusting here. Let me divide that better. So what's going to happen is that now that this chlorine molecule right here, I mean chlorine atom within the HCl, chlorine atom, has a partial negative charge and this hydrogen atom right here has a partial positive charge. Any of these three hydrogen atoms are going to have a partial positive charge there is going to be an, an attraction, let's say between right here and here, and that, that attraction that I've drawn right here is the dipole-dipole interaction. And this is just like hydrogen bonding in the sense that yes, there's an attraction between a partial positive um, charge and a partial negative charge. Um, but it's not, this is not hydrogen bonding, even though there is a hydrogen right here. This is not hydrogen bonding because the, the hydrogen that is involved in this bond is not bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. It's bonded to carbon. Okay, it's bonded to a carbon. So that's why the bond uh, that's formed right here is just considered dipole-dipole interaction and not hydrogen bonding. Okay. Now... The weakest intermolecular force is the van der Waals interaction, and it's significant only in long molecules. This occurs in all molecules, but it's significant only in very long chains. Very a molecule which has a lot of a um, lot of atoms in it, and it occurs when electrons flow to one side of the molecule, and this creates an induced charge. 
and it sets somewhat of a, okay, actually let me just demonstrate this and then these bullet points will make sense. So this occurs only, it's significant only in large molecules, so let me draw an example of a large molecule for you right here. Okay, I've drawn a very um, long molecule right here. As you can see that there's a lot of um, atoms, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbon atoms, and then there is one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 hydrogen atoms. So there's a lot of atoms. This is a very long molecule. This is a very long molecule. Okay? And so what's going to happen is that the electrons, all the electrons are traveling all around this molecule right here, right? And what's going to happen is that um, all the electrons are going to come to one side of the molecule. So I'm just going to represent this molecule with a big circle. Okay, so think of this whole molecule that I've drawn up here as just a big circle. And all the electrons are just, there's a bunch of electrons within the molecule. And then what happens, and then let's say there's another molecule just like this. They're not overlapping. So there's another molecule just like this, another long molecule. And again, I'm just going to draw a circle to represent that. And then there's a bunch of electrons in that molecule. And then what happens is that in one of these molecules, the electrons will flow to one side of the uh, the molecule for just a brief second. They'll just flow to one side of the molecule. This happens for a very brief second. Let's say it happens in this um, molecule. So all the electrons flow to one side. This happens in a moment in time. So all the electrons flow to one side, and then there's no electrons within this side. Okay, so what happens is that now that all the electrons are on one side of the molecule for a very, this happens for a very, very short period of time. Okay, I want to emphasize that. So now that there, all the electrons are just suddenly come to this side of the molecule, this molecule will, this molecule on this side, on the left side, is going to have a partial negative charge. And then since there's no electrons here, what's being left are just protons and neutrons. So this side of the molecule have a partial positive side. So what happens is that in the, in the other molecule, since the electrons are on this molecule are all on this side, the next molecule on the left side is going to, um, the electrons within this molecule are going to all travel here, right? Because electrons are repelled from each other. So all the electrons which are on um, the right side of this molecule right here are just going to travel to the left because they don't, they're being repelled by the electrons within this molecule right here, okay? So that's what I mean by it kind of sets a chain reaction. So this molecule right here is going to also start having this partial positive and negative charge. And you can imagine if there's a lot of long molecules like this, you can have a very, very huge chain reaction. Imagine there's another um, long molecule right here, all the electrons will flow. And now that now there's a slight um, attraction between the positive end of this molecule and the negative end of this molecule. Okay, and that is called the van der Waals interaction. Now what happens is that after that brief second in time, the electrons will flow back, the electrons here will flow back to the right side of the molecule, and then these partial charges will just cease to exist. They'll just go away, because now if the electrons are evenly distributed, they'll go away. So the electrons will flow back, this molecule will become neutral in charge again, and then that will cause this molecule to become neutral in charge again. And then if there's another molecule right next to it, that molecule will also become neutral in charge. And then all the van der Waals interactions will cease to exist. Okay, so I hope that video helps. Um, as you can see, intermolecular forces are not that hard to understand. I'm Shrey Suresh, and intermolecular forces are as simple as that.